so I like sports. Soccer is my jam, but I also appreciate baseball, lacrosse, rugby, and basketball. I was never that interested in football of the American variety. I didn't hate it, it just held no interest for me. I liked the sports where something was happening all the time, and the only exception was baseball. Also, I had a cousin who was a rugby player, and he had some less than complimentary words for American football with all their padding, because rugby was very similar to football, but it was faster moving, and there was no padding. I didn't care. My friend Trayvon played football, and I supported him in the same way that he supported me. Trey was one of my oldest and best friends, so sometimes I would watch his game and cheer him on, and he would do the same for me. Other than that, I had no interest in football. One day, when we were juniors in high school, Trey invited us to come to his game. We all agreed that we would. The rest of my friends loved Trey as much as I did, so naturally, everyone would want to cheer and support him. It was going to be fun. We made plans, and I agreed to drive as I had just received my driver's license and was eager to make use of my newly legal road skills. My parents let me borrow the Jeep. We planned to go out for pizza after the game. When we arrived, the game was in full swing because Cheyenne liked Trey and had to make sure she looked great, which I always thought she did, but I'm not a girl. Even though the bleachers looked full, we were able to find seats in the front. Alex ran to get junk food from the stand. She returned with hot dogs, popcorn, and sodas. She also was carrying pennants with our school logo and Trey's jersey number on it. We were now football fans complete with pennants that proclaimed our favorite player on them. Trey did great, and he was the best player on the team. I was proud of him. It was surprisingly fun, junk food and all. Our guys won, and at the end of the game, we ran on the field to hug and praise our pal Trey. Trey said he wanted to shower the football dirt off before we went out. So Alex, Cheyenne, Chuck, Manu, Todd, and I wandered around the grounds talking with the other kids who were hanging out waiting for their friends to finish showering. That was when we heard the noise. It was a loud bang. It sounded like a bomb. It was a gun, a potato gun to be exact. Suddenly, stuff rained down on everyone who was on or near the field. It stunk. Another pop. More stuff raining down on us and splatting on the ground. Something landed on Alex's hand. She sniffed it and then jerked back and shook the material off her hand, gagging. What is it? I asked. It's dog poop, Alex said, shaking her head. That's just gross. Ew, said Cheyenne. Nasty, who does that? Someone is shooting poo and garbage at everyone? Manu looked annoyed. Who does that? Why? I have no idea who would do that or why anyone would do such a thing, I said, looking down at the trash and poo all over the ground and on some people's clothes. The air smelled horrible. Trey came running up to us freshly showered and frowning. It was the other team, he said. My friend Rachel was walking to her car and saw the whole thing. She recorded it on her phone. I heard tires screech and a large pickup truck sped out of the school driveway and off down the road. Rachel came running up huffing and puffing. She looked like she had been crying. Her jacket was dirty. Rachel, Trey said, running over to meet her. What happened? Are you all right? I'm fine, Rachel said. I didn't know her very well, but she was one of Trey's favorite people, so I figured that she must be a decent person. I was on my way to my car, and I saw a truck with some of the guys from the other team. They had something that looked like a plastic cannon and were shooting trash out of it at you guys. I used my phone camera to film them. They saw me and threatened to kill me. Then they chased me in their truck until they saw Trey and the other guys coming out. Then they turned around and drove off. She was talking really fast. Not cool, Alex said, looking in the direction of the truck. We could only see the taillights. What are we going to do? Cheyenne asked. What can we do? She had removed her soiled sweater sadly. She had chosen to wear it because it was Trey's favorite color. I could see Cheyenne's eyes look like she was going to cry. We need to report this, said Alex, looking very serious. I agree, Rachel piped up. But what if they come after us for getting them into trouble? Cheyenne was not so sure. Yeah, I don't know, Trey said. I mean, what if the police don't believe us? What if they don't care and do nothing? I know, I said, but we should report it. Those kids did something wrong. I know they did, Trey said. 
But what if they came after Rachel? They saw her filming them and nearly ran her down in their truck. What if they get in trouble and punish Rachel for reporting them? I want to report them, Rachel declared. They did something wrong, and if they do not face the consequences, they will just do it again, or worse even. Yes, Alex agreed vehemently. Reporting them is the right thing to do. They should face the consequences. I agree, I said, but there are two problems. One is, what happens if the police do nothing? The other is, what if those guys come after Rachel? I'll be fine, Rachel insisted very firmly. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Let's go and report them right now. She was adamant and brave. I will write an editorial and notify the local news stations if Rachel doesn't mind sharing her footage. That way, if the news reports it, everyone will know about it, and the police will have to do something. And if those boys come after me, we can report that too. Rachel was fired up. All right, I said. Let's go right now. We all piled into the jeep and headed off to the police station. The officer listened to our story and watched the video on Rachel's phone. A couple of other officers came over to where we were and listened to the story. One asked if Rachel would send them a copy of the video, which she did. The police officers asked a bunch of questions, including which school we were playing. Then I took everyone home. At home, I showered and then went to bed. On Tuesday, the newspaper had an article written by Alex and Rachel telling the story, including reporting it to the police. On Wednesday night, all the news programs reported on the story and played Rachel's video. I found it somewhat exciting, although I would have preferred not to have been showered with trash and dog poo. After another week went by, the police contacted us wanting us to testify against the boys who vandalized the school. Rachel was going to have a police shadow to make sure that she was safe, although she never heard from any of the boys in the truck, even after we testified. All the truck turds, as Alex called them, received hefty fines and lots of community service. Justice was served, thanks to the attentive police who took our story seriously and the news people who ran our story and video. A few months later, I ran into one of the boys while I was picking up a pizza. I didn't recognize him. He definitely recognized me. Needless to say, he was not friendly. You, he said, you were one of the kids who narked on us, out to the cops. I stopped walking. I wanted to ignore him and keep going, but my feet ignored me and didn't move. We were thrown off the team. Our parents had to pay fines, and I am still picking up trash for the community service, the boy stated. Why did you do that? Because you shot dog crap and trash out of a potato gun at us and then threatened our friend. I couldn't believe that he would ask me that. Why did you do that? Did you think that you could shoot people with trash and crap and they wouldn't do anything about it? You were the ones who were in the wrong. The boy didn't respond. Instead, he walked away while flipping me the bird. Whatever, I thought, as I collected my pizza and drove home. About a year later, I ran into another one of the boys in the parking lot of the mall. I didn't recognize this one either, and of course, he remembered me. As I was preparing for another confrontation, he approached me. Once I confirmed that yes, I was one of the people who had testified against him and his friends. Then he apologized for what he and his friends did. He admitted that he and his friends were wrong to do what they had done. He also said that he was grounded for life, which he knew he deserved. I told him that was all right and thanked him for being a decent person. <laughs> we ended up good friends in the years to come. I learned a lot from that experience. I learned that friends could always stick together. I learned that it is essential to report a crime or abuse to the police to stop that behavior from harming more people. I also learned the power of the press. The truth is that I didn't know if the press influenced how diligently the police pursued our case at all. But I am sure that it didn't hurt and it made everyone aware of what happened. After that experience, I was thankful for both the police and the press for doing their jobs and helping. That is what their purpose is. I also learned that not everyone who does a crappy thing, pun very much intended, is a bad person. And of course, I made two new friends out of the incident, and that is always good. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you like the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.